We're given f of x comma y, and we're asked to find the following second order partial derivatives. But before we find the second order partial derivatives, we need to find the first order partial derivatives. So we'll begin by determining the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So we'll differentiate f with respect to x, treating y as a constant. So the derivative of five x to the sixth with respect to x would be 30 x to the fifth plus the derivative of four x y to the third with respect to x would just be four y to the third. Again, the derivative of four x would be four and we're treating y to the third as a constant. And then plus the derivative of six y to the second with respect to x would be zero. Again, because we're treating y as a constant. And now we'll find the first partial derivative of f with respect to y. So we'll differentiate with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So the derivative of five x to the sixth with respect to y would be zero. The derivative of four x y to the third with respect to y, we'd multiply by three, subtract one from the exponent, that would be 12 x y squared. And then the derivative of six y squared with respect to y would be 12 y. And now we want to find the second order partial derivative with respect to x, which means we want to differentiate f with respect to x twice, treating y as a constant both times. Which means now we'll find the partial derivative of this partial derivative with respect to x again. So the derivative of 30 x to the fifth with respect to x would be 150 x to the fourth. And the derivative of four y to the third with respect to x would be zero. Next we have the second order partial derivative with respect to y. So we want to differentiate f with respect to y twice, treating x as a constant both times. Which means now we'll differentiate this partial derivative with respect to y again. So the derivative of 12 x y to the second with respect to y, we would multiply by two and subtract one from the exponent, giving us 24 x y. And then the derivative of 12 y with respect to y would be just 12. And now these next two partial derivatives are called mixed partials. For this first mixed partial, we want to differentiate f with respect to x first and then y, which means we'll find the derivative of this partial derivative with respect to y. So the derivative of 30 x to the fifth with respect to y would be zero. And then the derivative of four y to the third with respect to y would be 12 y squared. For the next mixed partial derivative, we would differentiate f with respect to y first and then x, which means we'll find the partial derivative of this partial derivative now with respect to x. So the derivative of 12 x y to the second with respect to x would be 12 y squared. And the derivative of 12 y with respect to x would be zero. And notice how these two mixed partial derivatives are equal. And this will be true as long as f and the first partial and second partial derivatives are continuous. Before we go, let's talk about the meaning of these second order partial derivatives. The sign of the second order partial derivative with respect to x indicates the concavity of f of x comma y in the x direction. If it's positive, it's concave up in the x direction and if it's negative, it's concave down in the x direction. And the sign of the second partial with respect to y indicates a concavity in the y direction. So again, if the sign of this is positive, f would be concave up in the y direction, and if it's negative, it would be concave down in the y direction. And the mixed partial derivatives tell us how a partial derivative in one variable is changing in the direction of the other. We can also say that the mixed partial derivative with respect to x and then y tells us how the rate of change of f in the x direction is changing as we move in the y direction. I hope you found this helpful.